Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everybody's safe and happy and healthy. And like Francis said, we can start and you can just ask me um, anything relevant uh, about my academic career, my extracurriculars, social life. Um, I'm pretty open with most things. So, yeah. Um, if there aren't any questions just yet, I'll just take the liberty and just start. Um, so I'll start from the very beginning. Um, I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, and I moved here with my parents when I was about two years old. And I am a product of public schooling. I went to the local public schools in my neighborhood. And um, my high school that I went to is actually right up the block from me. It's Queens Preparatory Academy. It's not a big school. It's not a specialized high school. It's just um, my regular zone school. And I went in um, just with the idea and the intention of going into the school and making the most of the resources that I had there. And um, even though it wasn't a very big school, it wasn't, they didn't really have a lot of funding, but I just took advantage of everything that I had there. So I started high school, ninth grade. Um, and what classes did I take? I took just your regular um, intro level high school courses. I think I took living environment, um, algebra or algebra two trig, um, uh, just basic entry level courses. But in my head, I knew that I wanted to take AP courses as soon as possible and take as many as my school offered. I think my school offered about four AP courses and I took all four. So this is, I'm saying this just to emphasize the point that it doesn't really matter what high school you go to truly. Um, of course, great high schools are great, but honestly, it all starts and ends with you. If you get into a school, just make the most of it. Look at your surroundings, look at what's available to you and make the most of it. And that will really show on your applications. So um, ninth grade, I just took my regular ninth grade courses and 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, that's when I started taking AP courses. I believe the courses I took were, I took AP Calculus A, B, and B, C. I took AP US History, AP English Language, and Literature. So, okay, yeah, that's five AP courses. And of those five, I scored like a couple fives and a four. So I'm saying this to just try to aim for fours and fives because like those are the two highest scores and that's what really stands out to um, college um, admissions teams. What extracurricular activities have you done during high school? How did you balance your time between that and study? Okay, that's a great question. So during high school, I kind of, I start, I just wanted to spread my wings as far as I could and just go everywhere. So my extracurriculars are like all over the place, which I think is a good thing. I just followed what I really, really enjoyed. So in ninth grade, all of, all the way until 12th grade, I was on the volleyball team. And I actually started as probably one of the worst, um, the worst players. I think my coach told me that as I was graduating. He's like, you started as one of the worst players, but I graduated as one of the captains. So that in itself shows like a forward progression, um, which is very, looks very good on your application. Um, I was on the tennis team for a while. That was really fun. I also started my school's first fashion club. So I saw that my school, we didn't really have too, too many clubs. So I took it upon myself and my friends to just start something. And I didn't have the intention of like putting it on my applications. I just saw it as something that I wanted to do that I was passionate about. And that was pretty fun. And I just did it with me and my friends and we opened it up to the rest of the um, school population. Um, Aside from that, I did a whole bunch of like STEM and STEP programs. There's a program called the Barnard Step STEM program or STEP program. You can look it up. Um, it's available for minority children and you, it's based at Barnard's campus of Columbia University. And you just go there and you take a lot of really cool and interesting courses on any topics in the STEM field. It doesn't have to be about medicine. But what I'm trying to say is just don't, do things in the hopes of looking good on an application. Do things that you really, truly enjoy. So for me, those are, that's tennis and volleyball and clothes and other stuff. Just do things that you really enjoy that don't take away energy from you, that actually make you happy. And I think you'll be good from there. Um, yes. How did you balance your time between that and studying? 
That's a great question. Um, I think in high school, in high school, the workload was a little bit less rigorous, a lot less rigorous than it is in college. So I definitely had a lot more wiggle room to balance extracurriculars and studying. But I will say having a schedule or a planner helped me tremendously in high school. Like, I don't know where I would be without my planner or if you have like the notes app on your iPhone or whatever, just use something to really like visually chronicle what your day is gonna look like and what you want to get done. Even if you don't get everything done, just having that in mind really helps you stay organized. Um, what, when did you decide you wanted to study and have a career in medicine? That's a good question again. Um, when did I decide I wanted to study in medicine? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't really know when exactly I decided. I remember in middle school growing up, I, I knew I really, really liked writing, but I also knew, I also know that I really like science. So I didn't really have like a moment in my life where I was like, okay, I want to be a doctor. I just knew like gradually like that science and the humanities were two things that I really wanted in my life. And in my opinion, medicine is the perfect um, integration of those two because it's literally the human application of science and medicine. Like you're, you're seeing the science and you're seeing all the pathologies in the patients and it's really cool. Um, how did you learn about the Barnard program? I think it was like on the bulletin board in my high school or like my high school guidance counselor like recommended it to me. Um, but yeah, I think it was like just floating around my high school and I just decided to apply. Um, if, you, if you don't really have like a good relationship with your guidance counselor, don't worry. Google is your best friend. Literally just if you type in high school STEM internships, like you'll just get uh, so like pages and pages of options and um, you can actually apply online there and it's pretty helpful. I use it even now like as I'm in medical school and in college I used it to find inter internships. Um, what are some things I can do this summer to portray my interest in medicine? Mm, good question. Of course you know everyone our job is to be safe during the virus and everything like that so of course you can't really volunteer in hospitals i think there's like a very strict regulations on that but what you can do there's a lot of like um open and like online courses i think if you go to yale or harvard or ucla they have um a, like a whole portal of open courses that you can take i'm not sure if you receive credit for it but they are free courses open to the public and you can learn about any subject that they offer it's pretty it's really really cool they have subjects on like religion and um, like public policy, anything that you could really think of. And I think it's really worth your time to, to check it out. Um, how did you plan your SAT path subject test? Okay, so I came into ninth grade and I knew I was like, okay, so I have to take the SAT. I didn't really know too much about the SAT, what it was. Like, I just knew it was important and I had to do well. So that's where Queller came in kind of. And I just remember my dad just like shoveling me to this place. And I was like, where, what is this place? Like, I didn't even know what Queller was until I got there and they really sat me down and they explained it to me. And they said, your SAT is one of the most important places on your application to just shine and to just show true, I guess, like academic rigor and to show like, how I guess how how good it's not about how good of a student you are truthfully or how smart you are even it's just about how much are you willing to work for it where do you how do you like it's just a testament to hard work I, I think um, so it's really not about who's smarter it's just who wants to, who wants it more like who is willing to study and put in the time and I think that's where Queller was really an invaluable resource because it is a center literally you have to sit and study whether you like it or not so i definitely definitely think that it helped me a lot with my sat goals um as far as subject tests i think i took the the math the math subject test and the biology subject test i don't really remember but um subject tests are still very important because if you are really really good at one subject why not show it off and why not let the um, college admissions process like why not show them that um what would you want to specialize in i don't know 
I actually don't know. It changes every now and then. I think when I was in high school, I wanted to do pediatrics and now I'm really into psychiatry. So it really doesn't know. I really, I really don't know. It really depends on like what I see when I get to my third year of medical school, because that's when you do like the rounds in the hospitals and then you really see what it means to be a pediatrician or what it means to be a psychiatrist. Um, how, how did the tutors at Queller Prep help? Okay. How did the tutors at Queller Prep help? So the tutors at Queller Prep, I, one thing that I really noticed that stood out to me was that they were like my age, not like my age exactly, but they were college students, recent college students. So it didn't feel like, like a teacher was kind of like lecturing you and telling you what to do. It kind of felt like your peer a little bit. There was more relatability and it kind of gave you something to strive for. Like you see this like successful like person that's close in age with you and it's like, oh wow, like if they can do it, then why can't I? And they're kind of like in like a role model kind of. And a lot of the tutors, they're just, many of the tutors are just like really nice, kind people, which I think definitely helps the studying process. Um, what advice can you give to high school students in light of the pandemic? Um, in light of the pandemic, that's a good question. I think first and foremost, just make sure that you are safe. Make sure that physically you're safe and mentally that you're okay. That's the most important thing. Don't stress yourself because this is already a period of heightened stress. So I don't think that will help. So um, one thing that I, one thing that you can do during the pandemic, to, <laughs> sorry, that's my brother. One thing that you can do during the pandemic to, I guess, boost your application is, or just to keep up is maybe just like, you can like keep up with some topics that you know you're gonna cover in the next semester. Like just, I think it's just about being an active learner in whatever way that looks for you. If that means, you know, studying a little bit or even maybe taking a class. I know Frances has a lot of um, online classes that she's doing right now. Even like preemptively just taking a class for, for a course you have in the coming year to just prepare yourself. I think that would help as well. Um, okay, what else? Um, what advice? Okay, why did you pick Sophie Davis over all of your other amazing college offers, especially Brown Fleamy? That's a great point. Um, Brown Fleamy was actually like my first choice. I was this, 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 this close to going, um, but unfortunately, financially, it didn't really work out. And just to be frank with you guys, like the reason I chose Sophie Davis was because it was the one that I could afford. So that's another, leads me to another point. Make sure that you have your financial aid sorted out. It is the most heartbreaking thing to get into a school and not be able to afford it. So please talk to your parents well in advance. Talk to your guidance counselors. Really have a plan of financially what you are going to do, you know, if you do get into these schools. So getting in is just the first step. If you get in and you can't pay for it, then you're not going, unfortunately. So please, just to spare you guys a lot of like heartache and stress, just talk to your parents. Like, what are they willing to contribute? Like, how much do you think you can get in scholarships and financial aid? And make sure you do like your FAFSA and make sure your parents have their W-2s and all that paperwork ready well in advance. That is something that I messed up on that I didn't know. And in hindsight, that I would definitely spend a lot more time on. Yes. What is medical school like? Medical school, hmm. Medical school is like, I'm sure you've heard this already. I feel like everyone says it. Like if I had like a dollar for every time somebody said this phrase, I, I could have paid for brown plumey. But I think medical school is like drinking water out of a fire hydrant or a fire hose. And it's just, when I say that, I just mean it's like a lot of information all at once. And while the information is super interesting, you don't really, it's hard to get a chance to really sit and savor the material when you have like, like a hundred pages of it to get through so it's just a lot of information in a very short amount of time i think our like typically you'll have an exam on a body system like let's say it, we're doing cardiology so we'll have to learn the heart and its anatomy the diseases the drugs like everything about the heart in about four weeks to and then you take an exam so that's just like a typical example. It's just a lot of information. And in and, and my case, a lot of it is self-learning. So you really do learn 
how you learn. Like you learn how to teach yourself, um, which I think is very, very invaluable. Um, what do you think made you stand out the most in your college application? I think the thing that, I think it was a, like a mixture of a couple things. I think my extracurriculars, I didn't, I think it really showed that I just did what I liked and I cannot stress that enough. Just do what you like. It will make you a better candidate. It will make you a whole, like, instead of looking like someone who is just into STEM, like who just wants to do biology, like show them that you're a whole person. Show them that, that you're a colorful whole person with so many different ideas and interests. I think it was my extracurriculars, it was my academics, and probably my personal statements. So I just wanted them to really get to know me. Like the college application process is actually such a personal process. Like a lot of people don't talk about it, like even beyond the numbers, like you're really letting these people, these institutions into who you are. And I think it's just important to be very honest and um, with, with the information that you choose to give. Um, so yeah. Um, why, what did you write about for your personal statements and supplements for Sophie Davis and other schools? Okay, my personal statement was about my ethnic background, like a lot of people, it was about my ethnic background, and it's easy when you choose that topic to read a little bit cliche, but just make sure that it, it, make sure that it's honest to you, and like, I, sometimes when people write personal statements, they have a tendency to write what they think the the reader wants to hear but no just write what write how you feel write your truth write your story because I think when you do that it's it's hard for you to go wrong so and my other supplements I wrote about volleyball I wrote about um I wrote about like I think I wrote about like the clothes I like to wear like I just kept it light like kept it light kept it fun and true to me so yeah um, oh yeah, I wrote about Judy Bloom, one of them, because she was one of my favorite authors when I was like, uh, like twelve or something. Um, how did you go about picking the colleges, and after seeing them, what were the characteristics or reasons you chose the program as well as turning down the program? Okay, um, yeah, I I toured a lot of colleges, and all of them were very very beautiful. Most of them were like beautiful, had a lot of amazing faculty. The students were great. So I think picking the colleges was really, like I said early, it just came down to who gave me more money, like who made, who made it more economically possible for me to go. And yeah. What was the most challenging for you during high school? How did you overcome it? The most challenging thing for me during high school, hmm, I, think the most, I think the most challenging thing for me during high school was maybe, maybe like, I don't know, in high school, like I had like my group of friends and they were like my, like my people, but um, I didn't really branch out too, too much in terms of like my friend groups, which I, I think maybe I should have, but um, I mean, my friends in high school were pretty great. So I just, I just kind of kept to myself and my friends. So maybe I should have like branched out a little bit more, but I wouldn't really change anything about my high school experience. Was there an interview process? Okay, yes, there was an interview process. And so for Sophie Davis, you come in and they give you, after they email you that you are um, able to get an interview, you come in at the time and you know, you dress professionally, you have your little blouse on or your suit on or whatever. And you come in and they basically, they just talk to you about your application. It's just like a regular interview, except that they really want to make sure that you know what Sophie Davis is about. So you cannot apply to Sophie Davis without knowing like the mission statement, like what it's really about. And, and for those who are unaware, I'll just tell you right now briefly, Sophie Davis is pretty much, its purpose is to, they call they, they say helping the underserved or serving the underserved. And it's, in, its initiative is just to produce more um, doctors of color um, to work in neighborhoods of color and to service neighbor like people of color and we know um, in in U.S. history historically people of color black people brown people have been disadvantaged by the medical field and um, I think Sophie Davis is just working to like 
working to improve that or change that by creating more black and brown doctors. So people are more receptive to people who look like them. And I think the medical field is, is like, is like criminally underserving like people of color. So, yeah. Um, what do you think should be the main priorities when thinking about the overall college standards and having to meet them particularly in medical terms? Okay, um, I'm not really sure. What do you mean by that question? What do you think should be the main priority? I don't think they're, I think the, okay, I think I understand what you're saying. Like the priorities of like college um, admissions, just it's like the holy, the holy trinity, like of, of college admissions, academics, extracurriculars, personal statements, and that's it. That's pretty much it. And then, you know, you have your recommendation letters and you have your subject tests and your, um, and everything else, but those are like the three pillars of a strong um, application. Um, did you volunteer um, in a hospital during high school? Yes, I did. I volunteered at, um, at Cornell Medical Center in um, Washington Heights. And um, I worked on like the, the neurosurgery floor. I wasn't involved in any neurosurgery at all but I did help the nurses to transport the patients to and fro. And sometimes I would help the nurses care for the patients um, in very small, small ways. Of course, I was just a high school student, but yes, that's the hospital I volunteered at. Um, it was really fun. I think what I learned most about that was about the pace of the medical field. Like people really like, you know, it's a very high, highly paced environment and people really just come in to help people and get their work done and time is of the essence so I think that's what that experience really taught me and I quite enjoyed it yeah um did you shadow a doctor yes I did I shadowed I actually shadowed my family physician so I didn't know I didn't I was in high school and I didn't really have too much contact with a lot of um doctors who were shadowing people so I asked my family physician and I said hey like I would love to shadow you. I'm interested in the medical field. And she's, she said yes, and it was wonderful. Yeah. Um, she's a pediatrician, so I just shadowed her in her clinic. And um, I, I think whenever she would have a patient, if they needed like an ear exam or an eye exam, I would watch. And then as I would watch, I would just see and learn more things. And she actually let me do one. So that was pretty cool. And I saw that, um, she had like a centrifuge which is just like a tool that is used for like um blood sampling and i saw how she used it and she even let me use it once which is pretty cool yes um did you take the act also in your opinion how many max times should we take the act a great question i did take the act i think i got like a 32 or a 33 i believe but um, I admittedly, I focused a lot more on the SAT, but Sophie Davis does require you to take the ACT, I believe. I don't know if they still have that up, but when I applied, that's what the standard was. And I took the SAT twice and I took the ACT once. Um, the first time I took the SAT, I took it in, I think September or October of my, of my junior year or I basically I took the SAT twice in my junior year so that my senior year I was done with standardized testing and that helped me so 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 much because once you're done once you know you're done with standardized testing you can work on the other important parts of your application instead of continuing to study for some tests so that's when I think that's what really helped my personal statements to be so good was I spent more time on them so again I just want to clarify to you guys getting into a top college or getting into a really good school or getting an amazing score has nothing to do with how smart you are in my opinion i think it just has to do with how motivated you are how you plan your time and how proactive you are it has nothing to do with your intelligence i don't think so um who did you choose to ask for your recommendation letters i chose my um my ap english teacher and my calc teacher because I've had them for like the longest amount of time. So I feel like they were able to see me grow and progress as a student and a person. 
And those were also my two favorite teachers. So I kept it pretty simple. I just asked the people who I thought liked me and they said yes. So I think you guys should do the same. There's no use in asking a teacher who isn't too fond of you to write a recommendation letter. That doesn't really, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, I am in middle school. Nice. So what can I do to maintain my interest in medicine? Oh, that's, that's a good question. So in middle school, hmm, I think in middle school, the best thing you can do to like maintain your interest is just like to keep reading and keep like learning about science, learn about, it doesn't have, it doesn't even have to be about medicine. It can just be about the topics that interest you. Like just keep learning, keep reading. Like YouTube is a, an amazing resource if you want to learn like anything. Like sometimes I still use YouTube as a resource and I'm in medical school. So YouTube can be a phenomenal resource for just learning of all sorts. So I think just keep keep your keep your eyes open, keep your imagination open, and yeah. How much does standardized testing matter in the application process? It matters. I think it matters like quite a bit. But like I said earlier, it's like remember the the three the three tiers. So it's like standardized testing, extracurriculars, and outside activities, as well as um, statements. So I think if you split it up, three three three. I think extra like standardized testing, it's like, it's not really 33, 33%. It's more like 40, 30, like 20 kind of, but extra, I think standardized testing matters just a little, little bit more just because I know a lot of schools, like if you don't really reach a certain cutoff or like a testing score cutoff, they don't even look at your application. And that's really not fair. So if like to be fair to yourself and to give yourself uh, the chance that you deserve, just try and aim above the school's requirements. Um, what's the process for STEM research? How do you gain research experience? That's a great, great question. I think in research, I think my personal philosophy is it doesn't hurt to ask. So it's kind of hard, especially as a high school student to get into research unless you go through like a program or something. But honestly, if you have a mentor or a science teacher that also does research, or if you know someone who does research, just ask. I, I mean, even if they do say yes, it doesn't mean that you're gonna be like, you know, like mixing chemicals and doing all this stuff. It might be a very minor role, but that's way better than nothing. At least you get to see and experience um, what it's really like to be in a research setting. Um, how long was the interview process? The interview process? From what I remember, I think it was like an hour and it was a pretty casual conversation. I just talked about my my personal statements, yeah. Um, did you ever apply to scholarships and what was the process like? Which ones did you apply to? Um, I didn't apply to too, too many scholarships. I think um, when, I, when I did my interview um, and once I got accepted into SOFI, that was when they offered me a scholarship, so the majority of the scholarships that I did get were offered me were offered to me by the schools once I got in so I guess if they see that you are a really good candidate and they would really really like you they give you like a lot of like a good amount of money so yeah that's why um I didn't like pay tuition for my first couple years at Sophie oh hi grandma hi um um is Sophie Davis a good fit for someone who wants to do more research and not necessarily to be a practicing physician? Mm, no, to tell you the truth, I don't think so. Just because Sophie Davis, like your end goal is you're going to be a medical doctor, like a practicing physician. The only reason why I say no is just, um, just because the workload of Sophie is so rigorous that sometimes it might take away from like researching and stuff like that. Sorry, give me one second.
Timmy, I think you're on mute. Timmy, just heads up, I think you're on mute. Guys, is she on mute? Are you on mute? Wait, Tammy, say hello. Nope. Hold on, wait. I, okay, I'm doing ask to unmute. Okay, go, go ahead. Huh? No, you're still on mute. Okay, I'm clicking ask to unmute. One second, everyone. Hold on. Ask to unmute. Wait, I'm trying to unmute you. Hold on. Start video. One second, guys. We're figuring it out. Wish me good luck, everyone. It's the brand new Zoom. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll make you a host. Okay, hold on. I'm going to make you host. Here, you're a host. Okay, wait up. Okay, are you good now? Now you try to unmute. You want to just, maybe it's your AirPods. Guys, just give it exactly one second, okay? Hold on just a moment, okay? Um, can you guys hear me now? Uh, yes, okay, great, okay. <laughs> okay, sorry guys. Um, Okay, now let me see. Spotlight. Okay, is it, am I back in full screen? Yes? Okay, cool. Thank you guys so much. Sorry. Um, yeah, my mom wants to, my mom wanted to cook in the kitchen and I just told her, like, give me like 15 minutes. But um, yes, where were we? Um, hmm. Um, I think, can you, um, can you guys send your question, like the question that I didn't answer, just send it one more time. Yeah, sorry guys, one second, figuring it out, hold on. Uh, okay, I'm going on mute. Okay. Um, but I think what I was talking about was, I don't know, was I talking about the interview process um, or scholarships? Um, yeah, I think my school, like the schools that I applied to, they offered me the scholarships. But aside from those scholarships, there are so many scholarships that you can apply to. My only issue with them is like they sometimes the requirements can be a lot sometimes. So what what I would do is like see the scholarships and see the essays. A lot of the times the essays are very similar. So if you can reuse essays, then that is perfectly fine. Um, oh, yes. Research at Sophie. Yes, yeah, so like I was saying, if you want to be a researcher, I would definitely recommend like the typical like pre-med route. And then from there, you would do like um, like a doctorate degree. And from there, you would become a researcher. Although there are many researchers with medical degrees, like so many, I do think that Sophie Davis, like its rigor can kind of distract or take away from your research experience. So yeah, but um how do you manage living at home and going to medical school? So that's a good question. I don't live at home, even though I am at home right now, it is summer. So I'm technically like on summer break, but um, I, for my first couple of years at Sophie, I lived in the dorms for the first two years. And now I have an apartment off campus, which is actually a lot cheaper than the dorms. So I don't actually live at home. I don't think I could live at home and do medical school just because like it's very distracting for me to be at home and I don't really study too well when I'm at home. So, but everybody is different. If you have an environment where you know like 
you can study and you can have your quiet time and nobody's going to bother you, then I think you should be fine. And even if you don't have that environment, if you can just talk to your family and your parents, I'm sure you guys can reach a compromise because it is for your success. So I'm sure you can work something out. Um, what do you do in medical school? Do you just learn about medicine or you can do hands-on stuff with supervision? Okay, so in medical school, the majority of it is, it's like hands-on. So by hands-on, I assume you mean like labs and stuff like that. So there is labs. We do have like um, a pretty good anatomy lab. So we do that. And then but the majority of it is like learning like on your own and like whether you go to lecture or not. But I'll actually show you like one of my books. Hold on. Let me see if I can show you. I can show you one of my books. This is like the main book that I use. It is called USMLE Step One. And this is like medical school. Like this is this is what I'm this is where I'm learning from. So that's like the the bulk of like what I learn. It's like even though the book is condensed, like it is, it's a review book, it is like a condensed version, but um, it is broken down by like body systems. So you have like cardiology, like renal, like um, GI, endocrine, body systems, and like fundamentals, like disciplines. So you have like pathology, physiology, like histology, stuff like that. So it's like the organ and like the actual studies, like the, dis the different disciplines, if that makes sense. Um, what challenges do you foresee in your remaining years of study? Um, I think just like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them challenges, just things that I am, you know, ready to work on and improve on. I think time management is so, so important. And I think I'm pretty good at time management, but there's always room for improvement. So I'm just going to try my best to like not only make time to study, but also take time to like be a person and relax and do the things that I enjoy. Um, yes. What is the competition like between the students? Um, I think it was, hmm, I will say like Sophie Davis is a competitive place, but you shouldn't let it get to you. Like don't let it get to you at first. Like it is a little bit jarring just because like, you know, in high school, like I didn't really like things came a lot more a lot easier to me in high school like I didn't I don't remember ever studying for hours for a test or so in college to come and like to be studying hours and hours like days weeks in advance for a test it was a little bit of like a culture shock but you do get used to it and as far as the competition I think you should just keep in mind that you are your only competition the only competition that matters is the one between you and your past self you always just want to improve yourself like don't look to your left don't look to your right even though it is tempting to compare yourself but i just want to say like comparison will get you nowhere so just focus on yourself focus on your learning and um you know of course your friends can help you and you guys can help each other and just create an environment of um an open and easy environment like you don't have to be cutthroat even if everyone around you is cutthroat you don't have to subscribe to that kind of to that type of thinking you know so just focus on yourself yeah and i think you should be good um what challenges do you see do you oh can you tell me more about your experience of the scholarship process you mentioned earlier that there were certain limitations to attach yourself um yes so of course each scholarship has its like target demographic that it wants to um support so i think my only issue with scholarship was that sometimes the requirements were so lengthy like it would be like three essays and like you'd have to get like four rec letters but my advice was to just see if certain scholarships have like similar essays or if you can like reuse like statements so that you just don't have to spend all of your time on scholarship essays which i'm sure nobody wants to do um, as far as the college, as far as the actual requirements, apply to whatever scholarships that you are eligible for. Like, I'm not discouraging anyone from applying. I'm just saying if you can, like, ease your struggle or ease your time applying, I think reusing essays would be really helpful. Um, what has been hard about being home with COVID closure and still learning, especially labs? Hmm, that's a good question. 
like I said, like I was the type of person that I loved to go to like this the study rooms in my school. I loved coffee shops. Like half of the time I wasn't even in my apartment. I was just in some random coffee shop studying because that's what I like personally. Like in my head, I think like, okay, like if I'm at home, you know what else is at home? Like my bed. <laughs> and like why would I be studying when I could be in my bed? Which is totally counterproductive. So um I just have to like I think something that is really helpful for everybody who is studying at home and working from home during COVID is just if you have a space in your house that is like your designated study space or even if you don't have a designated study space even if all you have is your room or your bed even if like if you have like a certain position like that you are in your bed where you study the point I'm trying to make is just to have some type of routine that is different from sleeping and like relaxing you know like like your mind is so funny like when your body is positioned in certain ways it kind of tricks your mind into thinking that you're being productive or that you're about to start working so something as simple as like sitting up straighter or like sitting up in bed when you want to review your notes or like even sometimes I really like um standing up while I study like if you have like a table that's like like something like this like a flat table that's a little bit elevated if you stand up with your laptop and study that's also really helpful just anything that um that kind of tricks your body into thinking like hey like we got to work now so i think that is really helpful yes um what has been hard about um since medical school is so hectic is there some exception expectation to participate in extracurriculars it's a great 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 question um, there is an expectation to participate in extracurriculars, even though the main focus is academic, you know, extracurriculars are still something that is important in just being a student and like applying to like residencies and stuff. So yeah, there are expectations to do extracurriculars. Um, as far as now with COVID, um, it, that looks a little bit different. And I'm still trying to like reschedule and figure out some of the extracurriculars that I wanted to do but was unable were unable to do so um I'm not too sure I planned on like doing some research and other activities during the summer but I think they're gonna have to be pushed towards a later date what do you recommend when do you recommend to start applying for scholarship and when do people usually apply to them hmm I would say I would say like maybe like senior year just because a lot of these scholarships do ask for SAT scores and they do ask for like um, personal statements and see by senior year hopefully you already have them so it won't be too difficult so yeah I would say senior year beginning senior year yeah or as soon as you have like your SAT scores yes um any other questions if not any other questions, I guess I can talk about um, I can talk about my experience as a medical student so far um, until anybody else has more questions. But so far, medical school, like it's very like I'm learning a lot about the material and I'm also learning about a lot about myself. I'm a second year medical student. I'm about to start my second year and um, I think it, medical school is just a testament to like like consistency is key like sometimes like sometimes you just you just have to study every day like and that's just the the painful truth especially during during an exam you study every day over the weekends and that's just how it is you kind of just adapt and I think I'm realizing that I'm very like adaptable and like I can make the necessary changes needed to um like succeed so. um can you tell us what happens slash expectations after you earn your de degree do you get assigned a residency it's a good question so once you earn your de degree um like you do you don't get assigned a residency you would match to a residency program and by by the time you get your degree you would have already have known like what program you are matching to so residency application is a whole other like is a whole other <laughs> story but um i think you guys in at the high school level don't worry about that you're just gonna make your head hurt so just worry about like um 
you know, being a great student and being the best you can be right now. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any last minute questions, like, um, feel free to ask, but um, it's been a pleasure. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but um, I hope you guys took something away. I hope I answered your questions. So, yeah. No problem, guys. Thank you. Oh, somebody raised their hand. Me? Thank you guys. You guys are a great audience. <laughs> Thank you guys. If there's any last questions about anything, like I'm free to talk about it. Yeah. Would I practice overseas? Yes, I would. <laughs> That's a goal of mine, yeah. Thank you guys. Good luck with everything. Good luck with your studies. Um, I wish you guys the best. Um, I know you guys will do really, really well. What school did you go to? Um, oh, I went to Queens Prep Academy. It's just, a, it's just like my zone school. Yeah, um, yeah. Do colleges ever talk about the social aspects of medicine? Um, like the social life? Um, I think the social life is just whatever you make of it. Um, it's not really like enforced, I guess, like, of course, there are like, um, there, there are events and stuff, but you just make friends. So, yeah. Okay. Are there any subjects that will help you with medical medicine studies? Yeah, if you're like just, I think biochemistry is like, or you're just in high school biology, there are still some things that I learned in high school biology that still pop up every now and then. Um, like when we were learning about DNA synthesis and replication, like that stuff has not changed. Like it, it, the science is there, like the science is never gonna lie to you whether you're in high school or you're in medical school so just pay attention um and try and keep it with you because it does come up every now and then okay well thank you guys so much have a great night happy eid to everybody eid mubarak um, yeah, I want to say thank you so much, Temi. We're going to close up. We're going to exit out. I'm heading out also. Um, Temi, I'm assuming you were fasting today. I don't know. What yeah. So thank yeah, you for starving. Normal. I want to just say thank you for starving and doing this. Okay. And um, that's all. What can we say? Thank you, everyone. And now grandma's finger. Who was, was that your mom before? I don't, even, I don't remember. That was my grandma. <laughs> so yeah, well, we're, we're going to make food. Okay. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for um, supporting program on an empty tummy. All right. Bye everyone. Have a good meal. Enjoy.